Hi everyone. Welcome to Thrive with Nancy. This podcast offers executive women practical advice to kick up your professional results a notch or two. I'm excited for those of you who are back. Thank you for coming back. And a big hello to those of you who just discovered the podcast. Our topic is Kiss the Frog. Yes, it's a tongue-in-cheek and totally relevant to your career. Why? Because it's a metaphor for one of the biggest secrets for your professional growth. It emerges from one of a favorite fairy tale of my youth, the Grimm Brothers' The Frog Prince. But I never realized how important this fable would be to my business relationship building future until years later, one that I'm passing on to you right now. Let's take a step back before digging into this a bit. You know, and I know, women are awesome, rich relationship builders. No question about it. We're all surrounded by deeply supportive friends that see us as the greatest. And don't we love that? And we are. The rub is bringing our definition for relationship to the business world, including emotional connectivity that we expect, such as liking and trusting and seeing them as fun to work with. Well, fun probably isn't the right word, but enjoyable to work with and trustworthy and all of those kind of emotions that we expect from those who are our friends. But those feelings aren't essential to creating expedient results in business. You know, I intend to go into more detail on later podcasts because this is a big issue for women to understand. In this podcast, Kiss the Frog, I intend to address your relationship with a less than stellar boss. You see, when women don't experience a meaningful level of connectivity, it can harm them because they take an emotional step back, even in crucial business relationships, when they should be stepping into it. Your boss, no matter how good or how imperfect he or she is, is your most crucial business relationship. One day, they will be asking this boss of yours the big question, Is she up to the task? You absolutely want the answer to be a resounding yes. No questions about it. This aspect of relationship is rarely addressed. Certainly not frankly, which is my intention for today. So take heed. Through the years, I've witnessed certain attitudes that hold women back from reaching the top ranks of organizations. One is how women respond to their less than stellar bosses. Understanding how to make this relationship work for you will transform how the organization perceives you and the results you realize. So for a moment, let's presume you have a less than stellar boss and you've reached the end of your rope. What can you do? I observed and have seen four responses through the years that I want us to explore. The first is the outside escape. It's you taking another job at a new organization and thus another boss. Or you find an inside escape and transfer within your current organization. And yes, yet again, a new boss. Let's pretend these two options are looking good because you just can't stand one more minute working with that less than perfect boss of yours. But I want you to hear this. According to my research findings on this topic, women typically estimate that 65% to 75% of their bosses are less than stellar. Hear that? They have way more less than stellar bosses than those great bosses that they are hoping to find in their career. Does this track with your own experience? A McKinsey and company found the same results as I did when they reported that 75% of their survey participants said that the most stressful aspect of their job was their immediate boss. Get that? Wow. It's not surprising 
when you understand that 87% of companies say they don't do an excellent job of developing leaders at all levels. These statistics leave many employees saying they'd prefer a new boss over a pay increase. Wow. While you believe that a dream boss is what you should be finding, you know, that ideal boss who will support your greatness, the likelihood is that every time you go looking, you'll run smack dab into another less than stellar one without realizing it. You know, I remember a client who after a series of less than bosses was dead set on working for a terrific boss. No question about it. She's a tenacious executive and she found him joy Work was going to be perfect. Her career future was glowing until her boss was promoted and a truly miserable boss took his place. This occurred again and again until she took on the secret I'm sharing with you. What I want you to hear is your career success resides not on finding a great boss, but rather learning to manage and work with that rough and tough boss. Another choice you could make is the underground escape, where for the greater good of the organization, you inform your boss's boss or human resources that your boss needs development improving and training. Or if he or she doesn't improve, then possibly face termination. These women executives aren't coming from a mean place, Rather, they see their boss as needing to be fixed for the greater good of the company. And it wouldn't be bad for their career either. Let's be practical, however. How supportive do you believe your boss will be toward you, a subordinate who is attempting to expose his or her weaknesses to senior management, no matter how good your intentions Male executives also encounter these less than stellar bosses. But what I want you to understand in most cases, they typically respond very differently. In coaching, they tell me, quote, this is what I do to make it work. This is what I do to have my boss in the department look good, et cetera, et cetera, end quote. You see, they realize it it isn't about how dreadful their boss is rather about how they respond. So they choose the fourth option, which is play on the same team. Whether you recognize it or not, being perceived as a team player is a crucial response. It often trumps expertise. Being a team player reveals your ability to respond to challenges and work with disparate personalities, a core requirement for corporate success. Being seen as an outstanding team player by your company's top echelon is what counts. It isn't so much how you partner with bosses you respect and and who manage you brilliantly who will determine your success. It's these tough bosses because everyone in the organization knows they're tough. And please understand that I'm not saying you should never, ever leave a less than boss. But what I am saying is for you to have long-term fulfilling career, you have to understand and gain the skills of working with a less than boss. Your organization, no matter where you are, is always assessing how all its executives are doing and how they're managing and producing superior results even under less than ideal relationship circumstances. You're probably thinking, I got it, Nancy, but what am I supposed to do now? Let me share a real life client scenario as insight for you. There's going to be clues in this story that I want you to take on as your own. I was in a strategy meeting with the top three leaders of an organization where the successors for key positions were being determined. We were going through our list identifying each department and where successes were in place and where we had to take 
and look for outside help. Christine wasn't on the list, despite the fact she was number two and had been for a number of years. You know, I couldn't understand why she didn't make the cut because she was outstanding. All three, when I asked this question, said almost in unison, no, she's not a team player. Everyone knows she gossips about her boss and not in a good way. If we promote her, she'll demonstrate no loyalty to us either. Well, said I cautiously, you three are terrific, but her boss is a bit inept. Yes, said the CEO, I know, worst hiring decision I ever made, but she still isn't a successor on our list. I know what you're thinking. Those male decision makers, again, disempowering a competent woman who has proven herself and has a great track record. Team player, get real. What about all the work and contributions Christine made in the organization? Men unconsciously are holding her back, us back. You know, I hate to burst your bubble, but the top dog, the CEO in this scenario was a woman. Get that? Team play trumped a lot of skills no matter who is doing the grading. You know, the leader's perspective now, at least I hope you do, let's pivot a bit and switch viewpoints to Christine's through the four attitude adjustments for transforming less than terrific bosses. These leaders must have felt a bit guilty regarding the finality of their decision and hired me to coach Christine. Can you imagine how portrayed she felt when I told her she wasn't on the successor list? But after moving through the emotions, she was ready to kick it up and overcome this barrier, even though he was an absolutely less than terrific boss. Check your pulse. How do you partner with your boss? Maybe you've stacked up a lot of issues that confirm your boss is less than. I hate to say this, but it's easy to identify what's wrong with bosses and staff. It isn't a leadership quality. So the first step I had her take was stop talking negatively about her boss to anyone in the company. Even if she's in a room where others are bad-mathing her boss, don't join in. She said in response, why? These are friends of mine. In response, I said, just imagine everyone in the room going off saying, yes, Christine agrees with how terrible her boss is. Without effort, these friends of yours are negatively burning your brand into the memory banks of the organization. So stop focusing on the less than qualities. We all have them. If you want to be seen as a team player, Next, I told her, start making a 180-degree turn by measuring your boss for why the organization keeps him or her around. This, perhaps, is the most difficult assignment I'm going to give you in this podcast and the most rewarding. Your job is to find out why your company has chosen this manager for their team. My hope is you'll discern attitudes, behaviors, skill sets you want to hold and add to your arsenal as you explore your boss from this positive frame of reference instead of all the missings. Once you know the skills your boss shines at and your company extols as leadership, because that's what they're showing you by keeping this less than boss, that boss has something they want. It's time to master what that less than boss is doing and take them in for your career future. Ask your boss to mentor you in those skills. You know, Christina did this. She started noticing how good her boss was working with the board and strategically putting a board package together. Yes, it was a lot of work, 
But as he brutally redlined her efforts, she learned secrets that she owned forever. Then I had her filling the gap. Yes, the weakness gap. She already knew her boss's weaknesses. But now Christine used that knowledge to support her boss in this area. He considered it a great day when he walked into the office, never bumping into or talking to a live, breathing soul. Christine knew how he didn't like relating to people, so she volunteered to supervise the staff. He said yes immediately, and she took on a higher level ability than previously listed on her resume. As Christine became a team player in every way, what an amazing turnaround happened. The big three re-met, listing Christine as a possible successor. A year later, she was head of that department. I love that story because it's real, because she shifted her attitude and it made a difference for the future of her career. Ultimately, it is always your choice to work in a positive, healthy, freeing way with your boss, no matter how good or not so good he or she is. These four attitude adjustments that we talked about has your career thriving as you turn any frog-like bosses into princes and princesses by metaphorically kissing them as you transform how you partner with them. Or you can remain stuck wondering why your endeavors have gone to naught and you are not receiving the promotions you believe you deserve. I hope you're relating to Less Than Boss Kiss the Frog podcast by taking on new skills. I'd love to hear from you about what you're taking on from the Thrive with Nancy podcast and how they're working for you. Much success always. I'm thrilled you've listened to the Thrive with Nancy podcast. My intention is to offer quick tips designed for you to apply right away, ones that will boost your career immediately. I bet you're already considering ways to implement these new ideas. Perfect. Now, if you do me a favor, pass the podcast link on to those who will benefit, your friends and co-workers. Thanks so much.